Hello, I'm Kurt Vollmer, Extension Weed Specialist with the University of Maryland. Hello, I'm Kelly Nichols, Ag Agent with the University of Maryland Extension based in Frederick County. Today we'll be discussing a pumpkin weed control trial that was sponsored by the Pennsylvania Vegetable Marketing and Research Program. Uh, this study actually took place at four different locations this summer. We did it here at the Water Research and Education Center, at the Western Maryland Research Education Center in Kittiesville, as well as locations at Penn State and the University of Delaware. Currently, there are about 11 herbicides registered for weed control in pumpkins. However, only six of those are labeled for post applications. One of these post herbicides includes Sandia, which you may be familiar with. Sandia is a group two or ALS herbicide. We have seen an increase of group two or ALS resistant weed species of which Sandia is a part. Pigweed species are a prime example of a weed that is resistant to group two herbicides. With a lack of available post herbicide options, new strategies need to be investigated. In this particular study, we're examining what's known as an overlapping residual weed control program. This strategy involves making sequential applications of soil applied residual herbicides in order to overlap that herbicide's activity before the first herbicide dissipates. In other words, we apply a soil active herbicide at planting and then a second soil active herbicide a couple weeks later, but before the weeds start to emerge. And dual magnum is such an, such an herbicide and it has been shown to provide good control of grasses and small seeded broadleaves, such as pigweed. However, uh, dual magnum isn't per currently labeled for over the top applications in pumpkins. Therefore, in this study, we're looking at both dual magnum from an injury as well as a weed control standpoint. In this study, three pints of curbit were applied as a broadcast treatment at planting followed by three quarters of a pint or one and a half pints of dual magnum at two weeks after planting or at four weeks after planting. Treatments of dual magnum plus 16 ounces of select max were also included to see if we could achieve better post grass control. We didn't see many statistical differences in our weed control ratings, but we did observe some trends related to application timing. This first plot is our untreated check. Obviously, you can see the high density of smooth pigweed and grasses such as fall panicum. The next plot is curbit alone. This is our broadcast free treatment of curbit free, nothing else. Although weed control is slightly better than the untreated, notice that we obviously needed additional herbicides. Next, we have curbit followed by three quarters of a pint of dull two weeks after planting. And next to that, we have our three quarters of a pint of dual four weeks after planting. While not perfect, as you can see, control is better when dual is applied at two weeks rather than four weeks. This is not surprising as dual magnum will only provide about four to five weeks of residual weed control. Weed emergence data from Keatesville showed that there was a slight peak in weed emergence that occurred two weeks after planting. This indicates that a residual herbicide would be needed before those weeds emerged. A rye and veg cover crop also assisted with weed suppression as plots without a cover crop had more weeds emerge. Another thing to note is that soil applied herbicides need rain in order to be activated. This could explain why we didn't see strong differences in weed control. Ideally, you would want at least half an inch of rain within 10 days of applying dual. To leave things on a positive note, dual magnum did not cause any crop injury regardless of application rate or timing. The same can be said of our dual and select max treatments. So dual magnum shows promise as a weed control tool. However, it doesn't seem to fit as a single herbicide strategy and effective post herbicides will still be needed. 